I thank you that uh, you are having me as well for, for the call and uh, yeah, thank you very much that you decided to join the Skype call or uh, Hangout call with me on the Contemporary Druidry because you're a part of the Obot or like tell me something about your Druidry for the beginning, please. Sure. So I am a member of the Order of Bards, Ovates and Druids and I often you know, shorten that to the initialism O-B-O-D. And some people say O-B-O-D, and I just shorten it to O-B-O-D. Uh, but this group is worldwide, and it's made of people who follow a similar type of druidry. So O-B-O-D is out of the UK. They have a distance learning program, and it's a druidry that's really focused on nature worship and self-development and kind of like community and justice and connection, which fits really well with my spiritual practices. Um, if you're not a member of Obad, you might still be a Druid. You might also belong to a different order. There's like ADF out of the US or the ancient order of Druids. Um, so there are lots of different Druids, mm -hmm. but I am definitely most comfortable in the Obad order okay uh can you tell me like the kind of like have you been druid before you started uh practicing with or working uh, through the obot program sure so i was raised irish catholic mm -hmm. and that's where my like spiritual life began but um our family had a lot of fairy stories and we were all farmers so there was a lot of like connection mm -hmm. and work with the seasons and the environment so our catholicism was a little more pagan yeah. than some <laughs> <Earth -based>. catholicism <laughs> yeah yeah more connected and to the farmer farm and the, and the earth yeah tell me <laughs> yeah yeah and then we uh, my, as my sister was older, she actually decided to become a Wiccan. Mm -hmm. And as I came into college, because my sister had kind of opened this world up for me, mm -hmm. I realized that the direction the church was going was not congruent with what I believed and like what I wanted out of my spiritual life. So I explored a little bit and found Druidry. Mm -hmm. And I definitely practiced just by like reading and being on my own. Uh, and eventually decided that, you know, now I kind of want a little more community. I want a little bit more structure. And so I jumped onto the Obad order, but definitely practiced a little bit before I did Obad. Yeah, yeah. And so like there's definitely something to like solitary practice and then on the other side, uh, the structure or some kind of leadership and stuff like was it very big difference? For you between druidry as a path of yourself and then druidry as a path of uh, under some kind of bigger uh, bigger group? I don't think so. Maybe if I had joined a different like really structured group maybe I would have felt that uh, but my my druidry was art the beliefs I already kind of had adopted and was exploring fit so closely with Obad and Obad is not very um, hierarchical, and mm -hmm. I can never say that word right, but like the structure is really loose. So mm -hmm. there's a chosen chief, and there's a bard, and there's a pin dragon, and then there are smaller local groups that might have their own structure, but it's, it's pretty fluid. So it was mm -hmm. easy as a solitary practitioner to still feel empowered belonging to the group and not like I was starting over or anything. Um, it's just nice to kind of like come in and be like, oh, there's all these friends who believe in similar things that I do. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. So basically yeah. in at the moment you are kind of still practicing solitary, but you're a part of the high, bigger community also like online and through letters and newsletters and this, or are you practicing yeah. in the group? 
Um, it's pretty much exactly it. Most of my practices are at home and by myself, basically solitary, but I communicate with the organization through my blog and videos and letters with great people um, and just online, that sort of thing. There is a local group that I just kind of started. So we've met like mm -hmm. three times, two times, something like that. And Obot has this idea called a seed group. So you need two druids to do a grove and you just need any member to do a seed group. Mm -hmm. And we get together once a month and we kind of have a conversation about druidry and what we're doing that month. Uh, so it's very loose. It's more like a study group than mm -hmm. like a group group. You know, I haven't done much ritual in large settings. I don't know if you have any experience with that, but, um, it's a little hard to jump in. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, uh, the, there's a support from that uh, group that comes like online or in some kind of uh, letters as well, as far as I know. So it's a uh, kind of like a, a way how to how to work your druidry. There are some like ideas, inspiration, and stuff that is given to you by by the order. And uh, how does that work? I know that there are like three grades, and uh, yeah, how how is that? <laughs> So they like to call it a distance learning program mm -hmm. and it comes in the mail to you, which is very fun if you're like me and you like getting things in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're a bit of bookworm, aren't you? You love books yes, and yes. stuff. Yeah, you have amazing <laughs> book recommendations. I will leave uh, oh. the link on your channel under under the video so everyone can check it out. Yeah, and <laughs> sorry for stopping you. Tell me more. <laughs> yeah. So every month, once you sign up for the Bard course, mm -hmm. every month you get a little packet and it has four uh, Gorsi. And mm -hmm. these are basically little packets that kind of walk you through the teachings of the order. Mm -hmm. And they also include the first grade, the Bard grade, also includes some supplemental lessons and the seasonal rituals. So an actual like packet that writes out the Samhain ritual or the Yule ritual for an individual and for a group. Mm -hmm. And these lessons are kind of structured, just like if you were working with a teacher one-on-one -on -one or in a classroom. So you really like build on information and you cover kind of the basic tenets of the order. And inside these packets, you also get a lot of practicum or like experiences that you can do on your own at home to like mm -hmm. actually practice druidry not just read about it but like do it which is something i really appreciate about the order that it's not all in your head there's mm -hmm. a lot of you know like self-development and journey work and and practice yeah and experiencing nature and uh, how is it around you and stuff yeah exactly it the bard course is really all about opening yourself up mm -hmm. to inspiration, to Awen, and kind of setting the foundation for a deeper spiritual practice. This can be kind of repetitive for people who have been practicing on their own mm -hmm. for a while. Yeah, but it's still good to kind of go back and revisit those basic things. So you cover the elements, you cover kind of making your own sacred space, you cover basic rituals, Obot has its own kind of opening and closing to rituals, mm -hmm. so you mm -hmm. go through that. And also, like, and if somebody's uh, practicing or went through different paths and now goes into something that is more organized, it's always good to kind of know on which foundations should should the person build, like which of the ways is the way of, uh, of druids on which they then refer back to. Exactly, exactly yeah. right. And I think people who are open to repeating lessons and ideas and like that spiral that idea mm -hmm. of every time you revisit a topic you get deeper and deeper you understand it more and more people who are inspired by that idea who don't mind revisiting those basic ideas are the ones who will really flourish in obot i think because they're all about spiraling deeper into the wisdom of the order and into nature and into druidry so it's a good kind of test in the bardic grade just to mm -hmm. see if the the lesson format is one that works for you if it's a good fit 
Yeah, uh, you said in the beginning that uh, you have a kind of a Irish background or like by religion, you have Irish background and uh, you live in the US, don't you? Is this? Yeah. Yes. And, uh, yeah. Uh, but, uh, oh, but I believe that it's rather a Welsh tradition that the myths, the mythology is more like Welsh. How did it work for you? Like having some kind of Irish ancestry maybe, but uh, working with Welsh system, because I lived in Ireland and exactly I love the Irish myths and the Irish gods yeah. and now how to work it together when the Welsh myths are slightly different. Um, well, the first thing is I often get this comment on my videos where they're like, you're mispronouncing this Welsh word. And I'm like, that's <laughs> very sweet. Thank you for helping me out but I, I don't actually care. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> there, is, there is a lesson to that Welsh side and clearly very important to the order, mm -hmm. but I often will like read their Welsh version and then go find a corresponding story in the Irish myths, mm -hmm. which takes a little bit more work, but it's kind of interesting to see the patterns repeat yeah. and they definitely do. Yeah, so definitely. there are a lot of Welsh, have a similar idea and theme in the Irish myths mm -hmm. so I just go find that mm -hmm. and it feels a little bit more at home to mm -hmm. me but there's also that unique you know that cultic that Celtic culture is a pretty wide geographical area and the the feeling that you get still feels very much like coming home so it's not too far away from the Irish. There's mm -hmm. a, you know, some similar themes that really make it feel good. And like, I'm connecting to my ancestors and, and it's a part of, of my history. Um, yeah, so it still works, but I definitely am not learning Welsh and I often find more Irish myths just mm -hmm. better. Yeah, yeah, because there, yeah. Sh there are surely like some similar archetypes or like people who have like similar kind of quests and, and this kind of things. And it's true that uh, like the Celtic, Celtic Welsh uh, gods and uh, Irish gods are definitely more similar by the energy than another kind of, uh, for example, Norse, Viking, right. Scandinavian thing, Scandinavian gods and, and this kind of stuff. Uh, another yeah. thing is uh, you were talking a lot uh, about uh, uh, that uh, it's loads uh, quite about the self-development and working on your path and understanding your life let's say as well yeah. so is it like all very very like positive and uh, peaceful and uh, this kind of thing or is there also some kind of shadow work and stuff because uh, some druids that I know and uh, are like uh, solitary druids, sometimes they are like, mm, I'm not sure if to like enter some kind of these uh, programs because from outside they look all very, very like positive, positive, positive. Is there also something like going rather into kind of darker side of self? Yeah, um, there is definitely no decision in the order to like focus on one side or the other like uh they're very aware in the way they describe exercises particularly journey work where you're mm -hmm. doing all that internal reflection uh to have a like particular experience it's written in such a way that it's up to you and and your wherever you are mm -hmm. to kind of have that natural experience, whether it be very positive or, you know, a little bit darker and shadow self in the ovate grade, the work is a little bit more geared towards covering the topics that are, I like to say like stickier mm -hmm. in our internal worlds. Like there's conversations about how we think about death, how we think about sexuality, how we think about, um, like our role in the community and that can often bring up a lot of those darker feelings mm -hmm. and the things that we maybe haven't integrated as well so the bardic grade is kind of neutral I think mm -hmm. and the ovate grade definitely pushes you to go in a little bit deeper and to not hide from yourself those darker ideas that you need to cover mm -hmm. but it's 
it's also up to you. So if you're not ready for that, there's no one pushing you and being like, you're not a real druid yet. There's none of that. Just, <laughs> just what you're ready for, which is good. Um, I also see some of those groups that are really like, just kind of focused on the positive, which is nice, but life isn't like that. So I'm kind of with you. It's, it's good to have a balanced perspective. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So what would you consider as like a pros and pros and cons of uh, being in this kind of training that is like an official training? Sure. I think it'll be easier for me to think of the pros. <laughs> um, so let's start with the, those, mm -hmm. um, It is really great to have someone, someone on the other side of your training mm -hmm. being around to like push you, to bring new ideas to you, to kind of help you structure your lesson. Mm -hmm. It's hard to know what you don't know. So being in a specific training program helps you kind of expand into areas that you might not have explored mm -hmm. before. It's also really great to just have a community and people who can relate to your experiences or have a similar perspective and mm -hmm. connection to the natural world. That's, I think those are kind of the two biggest ones. The con is that I think it's easy to kind of focus your entire spiritual identity around the order itself. Mm -hmm. And that's in one way kind of nice, but on the other hand, it's still your spiritual practice. So mm -hmm. I think it's important to remember that like there's more to what you are doing spiritually than just the order. Like you can go outside of those lessons. You can, you can twist and turn and explore other topics mm -hmm. on your own. Yeah. Like don't, Yeah. You can experiment um, with it. Yeah. Experimentation is so good and and very much in line with a druid perspective. You know, knowledge and wisdom, there are lots of ways to gain those mm -hmm. traits. Yeah, and it's it's good to kind of push yourself. I also think um, the order is a mystery school, and I've I've talked about this on my videos, but mystery is really hard to have be like a positive thing and not be like a pretentious withholding knowledge thing. Mm -hmm. And I think the order does it fairly well, but I'm always a little uncomfortable with that mystery part because I, I believe so strongly in like sharing knowledge and, mm -hmm. and like learning together that it's really hard for me to keep silent. Okay. Yeah. So there are definitely parts that are only in the, druidic path or only in that in in that order and right that, yeah and and it, it really comes out in the ovate grade there's like at the end of the ovate grade there's there's like a switch and some changes and there's like more mystery explored and i was so angry when that came up i don't like surprises mm -hmm. and i uh, it was a really hard moment for me and i've kind of worked through that but Yeah. And do you have to kind of like, uh, you know, go through some kind of, let's say, ritual or oath or uh, initiation or something where you are basically promising that you will not bring those information out of the order? Is it... mm. There's definitely an initiation for each grade, uh, just kind of a way of, of working into your own mental space. Like, look, I'm on a new part of my journey. I don't think there's anything that makes you promise you won't share anything it's just like strongly encouraged and and kind of the understood part of of joining the order and like going up to each grade they like will introduce a topic and say this is part of our like mystery. So we mm -hmm. ask that you not share this with people mm -hmm. who haven't experienced it yet. So it's, I guess I could theoretically tell yeah. everyone, but then it would spoil it. So yeah. On the other hand, yeah, exactly. It would lose that mysterious blend or that atmosphere. I, I guess I, I think that it's 
I personally agree with that orders have something, some kind of essence that is hidden and it's giving it that atmosphere and it can bring another kind of uh, understanding and uh, wisdom and experience that is not normally reachable if it was just for everybody. Yeah. Okay, I wanted to or I want to I wanted to point out that there's uh, those three kind of levels because we didn't say that on the beginning that uh, it's oh, yeah. art, Ovat and Druid. And uh, do you also have like kind of personal teacher like to whom you are sending kind of your notes or some some of your works? Yeah, each grade, so the Bardic grade, you can request a mentor, mm -hmm. and I think you should definitely do that. My mentor and I didn't correspond tons, mm -hmm. but usually you can either like write letters or emails more often to them, and you're you're under no obligation to like send specific lessons to them, but it's someone that you can talk to and be like, I have a question or this really frustrates me. Mm -hmm. And each grade you have a different mentor so that you get a different perspective mm -hmm. of Druidry and the lessons. And if if for some reason you don't get along with your mentor, you can definitely request a different one. So you have a teacher provided by the order if mm -hmm. you'd like. And I, I definitely think it's one of the biggest benefits of being in the order is that you have that, that relationship, someone to talk to. Um, yeah. yeah, I, I really loved my Bardic mentor, my Ovate mentor. We didn't, we didn't talk as much. And so that relationship wasn't quite as exciting for me, but still a great person and a great tool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically the main benefit of being in some kind of order or in Ovot, uh, is, uh, that you really have that person behind the teaching to whom you can talk about anything that is concerning you uh, on the teaching. Yeah. That it's not like a yeah. book which you read and you're like, hmm, and what should I think about this? How do they mean it? And and this right. kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, is there any books that are like strongly recommended by by Obot if if it's possible to mm -hmm. share them, or is it uh, like that? Basically, you're encouraged to learn through the materials and then the rest just uh, through your personal way and view. Sure. Well, each topic area, you know, they go through different topics mm -hmm. in the grade. So um, in Ovate, for instance, we do a lot of work with astronomy mm -hmm. and there are some extra books in those lessons where they're like, if you want to learn more, you can explore these books. Mm -hmm. So there's kind of a reading list, but I wouldn't say there's any like officially endorsed books by the order. Many of the people who have been involved in the order for a long time write their own books. So Philip Cargom, Penny Billington, Joanna Verhoeven. Van der Hoven. Ooh, they might have gotten it. Yeah, she just wrote gotten... the, the the crane bag. That's, yeah, that's yeah. her book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Nimue Brown, I love her stuff. There are lots of Obad authors, mm -hmm. but the order isn't like officially endorsing them. Just yeah. There, so there they... are basically recommendations for another books, but what you receive as a letters is the complete teaching. Yes. Yes. Yep. Complete. Yep. Yeah. That's Which all. is good, because yeah, exactly. the course does cost a bit, so it's nice that you're not expected to go out and purchase more or find at the library more books, you know, it's all there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that, that's quite, like, exciting and, and great yeah. that you basically get, like, complete teaching. Is the teaching evolving during the years? Because like, you know, society is evolving, culture is evolving. Uh, is it changing or like, can you, uh, could you see like loads of change in kind of the approach of the, of the, uh, of the order during last years through the teaching or rather you see it through like social media and through Philip Cargom's YouTube and Facebook uh, talks every week and stuff? There um, there are multiple like editions of the distance learning course and somebody on Instagram showed me a picture where they compared like the when they first started versus 
like the current version. And I thought that was really cool. They haven't reprinted the lesson since I've been in the order. Mm -hmm. I don't think, but there is, you're totally right on, on YouTube. When you talk to the order, you hear all that evolution in the community and the lessons aren't, they're not outdated. They're, they're written in such a way that are already kind of ahead of their times. So that, that hasn't been a problem. There's not like language that's really um, transphobic, for mm-hmm. instance, you know, where yeah. there are a lot of political things that are changing in our culture and the order was kind of ahead of the curve or it's open-ended in such a way it's not mm-hmm. too offensive or, you know, mm-hmm. worrisome that way. I think while you're taking the lessons, there's also the Touchstone magazine that comes out once a month. And then there are little writings and artwork and stories that members from all over the world submit for this magazine. Mm -hmm. And that shows a lot of evolution and has changed dramatically since I started. The Touchstone used to be like really crammed and it was hard to read and not my favorite part of the order. And now it's much cleaner. The content is really well organized and the, there's just, I don't know, a rich group of people Mm -hmm. in the order submitting work. So that's evolved a lot. Yeah. So there's also like something that is kind of rather like there's the teaching that is, that is whole. And then there's something that is contemporary. That is like every month new stuff from, members from new members from old members from uh, the current uh, wave or current kind of times and what's uh, what's happening around at the moment so it's exactly and we're we're in the process of getting a new chief Mm -hmm. so um philip cargom has been the chief for years and he has said that he's chosen the next chief which will be um emir burke Mm -hmm. and she is actually from ireland and they're going through this three-year cycle where they'll kind of switch leadership from Philip to Amir and that process you know who knows what will happen with the order after she takes kind of over but I'm really excited about that and I think it's being done in such a way that the evolution will be really Mm -hmm. smooth and beneficial so yeah yeah I saw that that transformation kind of or the change of the chief is very like slow and in-depth and really like patient and uh, and nice philip was basically the second chief of of the of the group of the order the first one was ross nichols was he the founder of of the order yeah so obad started with the fraternal order at the at the turn of the century mm-hmm. when it was really popular for basically white wealthy old men to get together and recreate mm-hmm. historical orders and it was a you know it wasn't as spiritual then it was more like a political who's Mm -hmm. who kind of thing and that's not the most positive part of of our history but it did help us bring druidry into the the modern age Mm -hmm. and ross nichols really helped turn the order into a spiritual place Mm -hmm. and turn it into druidry that obad loves and participates in now that a little bit of reconstructionist but a lot of like modern spirituality a lot of paganism ross nichols was really great friends with gerald gardner Mm -hmm. and so you'll see a similarity between some parts of wicca and some parts of druidry because of that relationship and then ross nichols really taught uh philip cargom lots of things that he knew and and passed that torch on to philip cargom Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. yeah yeah yeah, I'd say that uh, that every kind of group, when it's led by one person, even though it's like, uh, even though the structure then is like rather rather loose, and everyone can have partly their own kind of path, that uh, it always has this kind of essence of of the chief. So I'm quite excited about your new chief as well. I can't wait to see her works as well and her energy in that. I think it's quite exciting that it's a woman as well. I think it's a nice change that it will be, that there will be definitely some kind of depths and mysteries that of course, like we as women, women can't see some things that men can do and that men can manifest. But on the other hand, she will probably give it another kind of spice uh, to to the yeah. future. Yeah, 
Well, I think it, it will be it will be great, hopefully. <laughs> I so okay. agree with you. Yeah. And and she's coming from Ireland, which uh, you know, is like a whole nother kind of region mm -hmm. of that Celtic world. So I'm hoping, you know, maybe there's a little bit more of that too. It'll yeah. be a good change. A little bit yeah. more of like uh, you mean also for example like comparison of those myths and uh, like interaction more deeply with uh, with those like customs and and yeah things. I think so and just uh, expanding kind of the the region mm -hmm. where where you're exploring in the yeah. um, later on in the course there's some work where you talk about sacred places mm -hmm. and they kind of provide supplementals of all these different sacred places and some of them from Ireland are definitely mentioned but I think it'll be interesting to see what the new chief brings in as far as like the sacred places mm -hmm. explored or traditions and language and story yeah yeah uh, would you also think like uh, it just leads me to a question based on like the history of uh, that that we were just talking about and uh, the positive approach but also like understanding your shadowy self and stuff uh, do you think that druidry uh, belongs to rather neo-paganism or paganism or rather new age or both it's really hard to put kind of some kind of definition and all the religionists are uh, kind of lost in this so there's nothing to say like that would be perfectly perfect and good but how do you see it personally sure uh, I definitely see it as a, a pagan path. Mm -hmm. John Beckett has this great explanation of paganism where you're a giant tent and there's four pillars. Go the gods, uh, self-development, community, and nature. Mm -hmm. And druidry, you know, is really around like nature and, and he it fits all of those poles mm -hmm. in the pagan tent. So I see it as a pagan religion. There are some people who practice Druidry that are much, much more reconstructionists. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to recreate exactly what our ancestors hundreds of years ago did. I think there's a lot of wisdom in history. I don't find a lot of spiritual growth or peace or mm -hmm. wisdom in trying to recreate what happened hundreds of years ago because I don't live in that world. I yeah. live now. So for me, it's a very modern pagan practice with a healthy respect for our history and where we come from. Um, there are some people who are involved in the order, who take the classes, who still consider their religion to mm -hmm. be Catholicism or Christianity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's because the order has no dogma about deity. Mm -hmm. Like deity is is your relationship and how you want to participate. There's a lot of wisdom that can be used even if you belong to an Abrahamic faith. Mm -hmm. So some people just see it as a philosophy instead of a religion. For me though, it's it's definitely my religion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank But you like for, for this. That, that's like great information and great uh, clarifying. Is there some kind of group of people for whom the Druidry is not really recommended? Because I know that when I've read like uh, what to consider before you enter Obot or before you apply for uh, for the materials, uh, there's uh, a note on uh, that if you are not okay by your mental health or you're like medicated on it or have like schizophrenia, that some of the ways might be uh, slightly harder or even uh, not really safe for, for people. Is it because of some kind of meditations or journeying or something like that? Yeah, the mental, the mental health definitely comes because, um, you know, Philip Cargom's day job in a sense, is working in, in mental health and, mm -hmm. and counseling. Mm -hmm. So I think he's very aware of that. Some of the meditations and journey work is really intense. And if I, I think if you're prone to um, mental health difficulties, some of that might be hard to distinguish mm -hmm. what is like spiritual practice and what is... Um, you know, part of things that make your mental health not great. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I would hope that people who um, 
need extra help with mental health already have a support team that involves a professional Mm -hmm. who could maybe look at the material beforehand and say, yes, this will totally work or, hey, maybe skip this exercise. I wish that everyone had that type of support network. I know that not everyone does, Mm -hmm. though. So I think that's where that warning comes from. Mm -hmm. The other thing I would say is people who are not uh, growth minded or who really like learning and pushing themselves will will not enjoy this course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's definitely focused on on like wisdom and spiraling in on that knowledge again and again. So if that's not your thing, you, you won't have fun in this course. Yeah. And yeah, I think those are kind of the two big groups that I would be like, not for you. Mm-hmm. Of course, there's this like intro packet that mm-hmm. you can get for, I don't know, it's like 15 euros or something like that. And it gives you a sense of the style of the course and the the flow of the course. Mm -hmm. And it's a really nice way of being like, this is something that will work in my current practice or work for my learning style or say, Ooh, I don't like this style Mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's actually quite, quite great to have some kind of like sneak peek uh, on the first, some kind of preview. Uh, last question that I will ask you because we are running slightly out of time is like, what is the kind of, outer impact of uh, of uh, of the order like uh, are you working on with some kind of let's say groups that are supporting the environment or are you working on some political things that you find uh, important and stuff or is it rather just like working on your path for the members no there is a huge push to take your practice and ideas out into the world. Mm -hmm. There are lots of druids who are working on anti-fracking right now. Mm -hmm. Lots of druids that are working on reforestation Mm -hmm. and lots of druids who are working on like urban environmental concerns. For me, I used a lot of my druid ideas to work in community gardens. Mm -hmm. So I helped start a community garden in downtown where like raised garden beds. It was all about like, organizing community, bringing soil and green space to people. And that was a great reflection of my spiritual practice. And it's actually reached the point where I've changed my career. So I used to work at a library and now I work for a land trust. Mm -hmm. We're a nonprofit that protects land permanently. We take forest and prairies and school gardens and we put conservation easements on them so that legally the land has to stay as green space wow. forever That's or as amazing. long as humans have courts, of course. Yeah. Um, so Druidry has definitely impacted my outer world pretty dramatically because I've, I felt a strong call to be like, I need to be more involved in protecting mm-hmm. the things that I find sacred. So that's yeah. just, yeah. That's yeah. brilliant. Okay, so thank you very much uh, for coming, for talking to me and for answering all my questions on Oboat and uh, see you soon, so. Thank you for having me. It was great to talk with you and I love your Instagram, so it's <laughs> thank <great> you. fun. <laughs> thank you very much. See you, so bye. Bye. Pokud se vám video líbilo, tak neváhejte dát like a odebírat můj kanál a při odběru nezapomeňte kliknout na malý zvoneček vedle hlavního tlačítka, abyste ode mě měli všechny informace z první ruky. Taky mě můžete sledovat na Instagramu nebo se ke mně připojit na Facebooku a pokud byste měli nějaký dotaz, tak mi neváhejte napsat na můj e-mail a kdybyste se chtěli dozvědět něco více o mých kurzech, tak navštivte moje stránky. Moji tvorbu můžete také podpořit skrze Paypal nebo Kofi, na které najdete odkazy dole pod videem.